at risk of scaring you off from this video already, I want you to reflect back to your school days. <laughs> I know. <laughs> the teacher announces, hey everyone, we're gonna go around the room and introduce ourselves. And we're also gonna share a fun fact that we want people to know about us. And because we've immediately forgotten our name and anything fun about ourselves, our palms start sweating and we freak out until the moment that the person in front of us is done speaking and then it's our turn. These were the little droplings of public speaking that our educators introduced into our lives so that we could get a little bit comfortable with communicating with other people. But the truth is public speaking isn't always putting on a snazzy outfit, presenting a bunch of slides and standing on stage in front of way too many people. It happens all the time throughout our day, just doing the normal things. Whether you're ordering a coffee at Starbucks or you're hopping onto a Zoom call. How we use our ability to speak and articulate a point and get to know other people is critical in so many different areas of our lives. So we really can't discount public speaking completely because we have to be pretty good at it if we're going after the life that we want. But here's the good news. It is 100% possible, no matter if you're introverted or extroverted, whether you're outgoing or a little bit shy, it is possible for you to get great at public speaking. I can tell you this without a shadow of a doubt because I myself am an introverted, shy person. No, really, I am. I know I've probably come a long way <laughs> in this area of my life. It took a lot of practice, but there was a time where I definitely failed public speaking class and it was not on the radar whatsoever. But I had really good reason to get better at it. And that's because I wanted to compel people to get on board with my ideas. I wanted people to be a part of what I was doing in my business. I wanted to teach people. I wanted to get people excited about going after the life that they want. And so getting better at speaking was a very important part of that journey. And it is not something that only outgoing extroverted people are good at when you have the right idea in mind. So if you're ready to level up a little bit in this area, even if you don't want to be a public speaker someday, but you just want to get a bit better at the idea of presenting yourself, then I think you're going to enjoy this episode. Good morning, good life. Welcome back to the show. My name is Amy Landino. If you are an ambitious professional, I know you are, who is going after the life that you want, then please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel. We upload new episodes of Good Morning, Good Life every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern. Here's what we have in store for you today. First, I wanna share a few ideas on this, especially for the introverts in the room, about how to network and communicate with other people when you are introverted. Let's break down some of those barriers so that you can knock down the limitations you already feel in your head right away. Then I've got another fun challenge from my team. They want me to present something to you as a speaker and I have no idea what it is yet. So <laughs> this is probably not going to go great, but I'm going to bring as much confidence as possible so that you will feel better about whatever it is you have to present next. Next, I wanna share a couple things that I do in my pre-speaking ritual so I can get my head in the game and make sure that I present my best self when it is time to speak to other people. And finally, we'll send you off into your week with your permission slip. Before we dive in today, let's take a few moments to thank the sponsor of this episode of Good Morning, Good Life, and that is our friends at Taylor Brands. If you're one of the ambitious professionals around here and you've got a great idea that you're ready to turn into a business, you're probably a bit overwhelmed with all of the things on the list to do. It might be paralyzing you a little bit, everything from filing the proper paperwork to creating a logo. Well, fortunately for you, Taylor Brands is here to help make some of that process 
a heck of a lot easier. Taylor Brands is an easy to navigate one-stop shop platform for everything you need as a small business owner. We're talking logos, branding, merchandise, social tools, and so much more. Their design platform is AI powered and the first of its kind in the world. It makes it so much easier and accessible for anyone to create their unique brand identity at any experience level. So much of establishing yourself and your brand as a trusted resource has everything to do with how you present yourself. If you wanna offer value and let people know how you can benefit them with your product or services, you've gotta grab attention, you've got to stand out. Taylor Brands has everything that you need so that you can look like a pro from the very start. Take care of that checklist and start with your small business today over at Taylor Brands for as low as $3.99 per month so that you can get back to doing what you do best and that is your work that you love. Get a bonus 40% off when you use my code with the link in the description down below. Click the link and use my code AmyLandinoYT and get started today. Thanks again to Taylor Brands for sponsoring this episode of Good Morning, Good Life. One particular thing that I had to overcome as an introvert who decided to go and work on her own and very much be in the driver's seat of everything that was happening in her life, <sighs> so much work, was figuring out how to network, meet new people, and continue to succeed. Because apparently you do need to know people in order to succeed. Okay, let's start with this. The word networking kind of sucks. but. Don't think about this so much as the word networking because I feel like it's been given a super bad rap. Everyone's envisioning like the bad guy that comes to the networking event with all of his business cards. I don't know why I put business cards and networking event in quotations, but that's a thing I do apparently. <laughs> and that guy is just like spewing these business cards all over tables and just can't shake your hand fast enough in order to introduce himself. If we're talking about what it really means to network, it's to simply become more connected so that you can increase that luck that happens to a lot of people that's actually very much hard work and getting to know others and not trying to pitch themselves first. One really big tip that is gonna make this easy on you is to do cool stuff because you won't have to start conversations. People will want to start them with you. No matter if it's an email conversation or an in-person conversation, and somebody is going to want to learn more about you once they are hearing or seeing what you're all about and how you're leaving an impact on the world. The more value you create, the more likely someone's going to want to talk about you. That's really exciting because it's easier for me as an introvert to be brought into a conversation that somebody wanted me to join. <laughs> so when you do cool things and people see that and they respect that, I already feel like I've presented value, so it's very, it just feels like a more fitting invitation to become a part of a network or become a part of a conversation, become part of a relationship. Okay, but let's say you're just a regular old introvert at a regular old networking event and you're trying to figure out what to do with your life. You could A, run for the door, or you could B, decide to be in this bubble that is not your comfort zone for a short period of time and make the most of it and turn on. And I think that's what I've basically figured out. People think I'm an extrovert constantly. I am just very good at turning it on. I recognize this about myself. I sort of have a zone when I'm around a big group of people or a lot of people or a few people. Actually, a few people can be really tough too. Or let's say I'm making these videos. There's different environments where I need to be on and I simply have a zone that I go into for that thing. I know my limits. I know that I'm gonna need to stop at some point. I'm gonna need to be alone at some point. I'm going to need to not speak to anybody at some point. But at this time, it is not that point. Knowing that that will happen and knowing that I can get to that is great. And here's a tip from there. It is very easy to start a conversation when you are not talking about yourself. Instead of thinking that you have to be like that guy that has all the cards and he's like cramming them down people's throat, the best thing you could do is not talk about yourself but start a conversation on anything, anything to do with that person. I love your shoes. That one works for me every time because first of all, it's usually very genuine. I don't say that about shoes, I don't like. Pointing out something about someone else. As an introvert, I feel like it's very, very important because it's so much harder to walk up to someone with the plan to somehow unveil what you're all about. My next piece of advice is that if you actually want to be 
somewhat successful in the area of networking, it simply means being connected to people. So a lot of the time when I am quote unquote networking, I'm simply introducing people to each other. And what that does is when I connect the dots on person A and person B and what they have in common, whether it's work or personal or anything else, and I say, by the way, do you guys know each other? Instead of holding your network close to the vest, connect everyone together. That's literally something you could do right now. You could network, you could be more connected right now by simply thinking of two people who should know each other and making an email introduction. Pro tip, you should probably ask the people if they wanna know each other first. I think the biggest thing here is there's a million different hacks. There's a lot of practice that goes into it. There's simply knowing you know what you're talking about and just being confident in that. And we've talked about confidence here. But most importantly, you just have to get out of your head that you're not good at networking. Because when you just tell yourself those things, you think it's like, oh, I'm just self-aware of a skill set I don't have. No, that's not actually true. You are negatively self-talking because it's your excuse to not actually try. And like I said, unfortunately, we need to know people in order to succeed in life. So stop with that argument because it's not going to work out. Spoiler alert. My team has offered me a challenge today to get you excited about speaking publicly, presenting, and they have created a timed presentation for me to give that I have never seen before. So apparently, I will be giving you a presentation today on how to fool people into thinking you have your life together. Um, (laughs) I'm sorry for the flickering screen. We may actually go ahead and just like overlay the slides for you so this isn't the worst experience. But you get the gist. It's going to play in real time because I swear I've never seen it. So wish me luck. Good morning, good life. My name is Amy Landino. I want to talk with you today about how to fool people into thinking that you have your life together. You might be asking yourself, why are we using the word fool? Do we really want to treat other people like fools? No, not necessarily. I just want you to feel so much better about the fact that you probably do have your life together. We just need to communicate it with other people in a way that will make us feel more confident. The name of the game today is confidence. Now, what is not confident? Let me tell you what's not confident. This crazy looking Swiss Army knife. If someone were carrying this, I would probably run, I wouldn't want to see it, but certainly the person carrying it, how could they feel confident about having their life together when they don't even know what tools they have in this thing? There's so many to choose from, how would you even know where to start? Not to mention the fact that it's so dangerous when you just don't know where to start. And that Swiss Army knife really delivers on that. But. This is what it looks like for you to not have your life together. If you were wondering what it actually just, if you could have a visual, this is it. First of all, wait, not enough social distancing going on, in my opinion. Secondly, all these people don't have real personality. They don't have onion layers. They don't have anything going for them. They're literal mannequins, okay? So that's not having your life together, and that's not you, okay? You are a Lego. You are anything you want to be. All you got to do is know how to work with the other Legos around you and you can build something amazing. But without you, we can't start. And that's everything that this is all about. It's about the start, okay? We're not fooling anyone. We're taking the small steps to move forward, to get our lives together, to show the world we have it together, and we're going to build like amazing Legos. Ultimately, so we can be as awesome as a little bit of gelato, as they like to say in Italy, um, or ice cream for those of us in America. I mean, where can you go wrong with ice cream? We all just wanna feel like we're just ice cream and everyone loves us, okay? We're not gonna fool anyone into loving us. We're just gonna be that good. It's that simple, okay? Yeah. Now, let me tell you a funny story about Jenga. Jenga is what your life looks like when you let other people decide how things are gonna go. When they start pulling your pegs out, when they start yanking, 
you know what? It takes away from you. It takes away from who you are and what you want for yourself. And you don't need that. You don't need to tumble down. You need to stay strong. You need to stay tall, like a tall Jenga tower, one that has stability, all the pegs in place. That's what we want. That's having your life together. Otherwise, you're just gonna feel like a sack of potatoes. Some people love you. Some people just don't feel like even trying. And so they go down the street to McDonald's for a quick fix, okay? We don't need that either. We wanna stand strong, we wanna be desirable, we wanna be delicious. Again, back to the ice cream. We're not a sack of potatoes. But if we were a sack of potatoes, we'd still be great, okay? We'd be worth it. And you're worth it. You are worthy of everything you want in your life. Is that the end? We ended on a sack of potatoes. <laughs> well, I crushed that, okay? <laughs> like, let's just... <laughs> if you want people to believe <laughs> you have your life together, especially when you're doing a presentation, then don't shy away from the content, lean into it. Find the story, find a way to make it compelling. If whatever version of these slides is supposed to be compelling to your audience because you know them well enough, then you can make any slides work. <laughs> I guess that's it. Did I sound full of crap the whole time? Maybe, but oftentimes when we're presenting our best selves and giving the best we possibly can, it's because we are showing so much conviction in what we believe when we present. And so hopefully you actually believe in your presentation before you give it and you've seen your slides before. But even if you haven't, you can communicate effectively. You've just got to show people that you are there, you're not messing around, and you are going to be the resource they need to help them to understand. And I'm going to take a bow because that was impressive. So I wanted to share some of the things that I do to prepare to present from the night before to the morning of to the actual presentation. What are the things that help me get in the right headspace? Maybe you can use to your advantage as well. In advance of the presentation, first and foremost, if you have slides, if you have any information that's going to be displayed, it's all going to be ready and you really need to know what's on it. Okay, nobody wants you presenting something that you barely finished the night before and so you don't even remember what you did. So the night before I am reviewing those slides, I'm clicking through them, making sure I already know what's happening in the next one in case the flow of it is very important for me. But for the most part, slides should just be helper visuals to whatever you're talking about. So you should know your stuff. I need to feel like I know my stuff. I need to feel like I know any data that's very important. And so I run through that the night before. I also pick out what I'm going to wear. The process of this is a lot easier when you just know what your best uniform is. For me, I love to get a dress, an A-line preferably that comes below the knee and covers up top. Just professional, super easy and flattering. So when people are snapping photos of slides or you're moving around on stage, that it is not going to look funny based on what you picked out to wear that day. I also have like a go-to jacket. If I want to professionalize it a little bit, it's got a little shoulder pad action. So uh, yeah, it just makes me feel like I've leveled up whatever I've got on. Sleep, 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 sleep. Nobody needs to yawn through your presentation and it definitely shouldn't be you. So make sure that the day before you have a presentation, you get enough sleep. Okay, that is top priority. On the morning of, I like to go as slow as possible, but I do like to get a workout in and just have that quiet time. I will eat a little bit of breakfast, but I don't love to eat too much, especially if I'm going on stage, which is why I really prefer to present earlier in the morning so I don't have to wait that long to eat. But either way, I'm just gonna have a, like a little bit of yogurt and some coffee and plenty of water before I walk on stage and I'll worry about eating more when I am all done, okay? No burping on stage. <laughs>
new. I think the most important thing though is having that time that I need from an introvert standpoint. In order for me to present my best self on stage or even on a Zoom call when I did my team retreat, that was an eight hour ordeal. It's a small group of people, but it is still eight hours that I am trying to present my best self as the leader of the company. And I have to prepare myself for mentally. So before I get on that call, before I get on a stage, any of those things, the morning of, I need to be able to just be centered with myself. So I will have as much quiet time as possible. I set boundaries. If the event wants me to do X, Y, Z other things, I will do X, Y, Z other things, but they're going to come after the most important task is done. And that is the main presentation. And that's just, my ground rule. I'm not gonna do it any other way, otherwise they're not going to get the best version of me. I don't set up a bunch of calls or interviews or meetings in advance of speaking because that's just not going to work. But everyone is different and that's just how I set myself up for success. I think the biggest thing when it comes to nerves is recognizing that any form of communication takes practice. Every time I sit down to make a video, it gets easier. Every time I walk on stage, it gets easier. Every time I host a retreat or a big Zoom call or a live stream event, it gets easier. So getting in your reps is really, really important. That way, the day of, your little moments of jitters and shaky knees are significantly less likely to happen, especially when you know your stuff, you know what you're talking about, and you're excited about it. Just go into it believing that everyone is rooting for you. Because even though it feels like there's a bunch of eyeballs on you and the moment that you screw up, everyone's going to see it, nobody actually wants that for you. Everybody wants you to get through this flawlessly, amazingly, especially because they wanna take away the best pieces of it to go on into their own lives. So go into your presentation, believing that everybody wants to see the best of you, and therefore, it'll be a lot easier for you to feel like they're not waiting for you to fail. Are you ready to go right now? It's time to go right now. It's your time. You're in the perfect place at the perfect time to do what you're about to do right now. You're exactly where you should be. So get out of your head. You're going to do amazing. It is not about how you do what you do. It's not about all these little details. It is about the energy that you bring. It is about focusing on that one person and delivering to the greatest of your ability so that they can appreciate everything you've done because they are rooting for you. Bring the energy, crush it. Make it happen. In case you missed it, I just wanted to remind you that my latest course, Self Love Level Up, is going to be closing its doors very soon. And I thought this would be really important to let you know because a lot of what we've talked about here has everything to do with mindset and not as much to do with actual presentation skills. And that's because if we don't do the inner work first, we can't present our best selves. So if you're struggling with letting crappy things from the past go or making decisions in your life or doing what it actually takes to become the master communicator that you know that you can be, then I really wanna encourage you to join us in Self Love Level Up because there is so much that we can do together to clear your mindset and make it something so that you believe that you can be the best person in that situation, on that stage, in that Zoom room, wherever it is that you are trying to influence people to be a part of something that you believe in. You've gotta be able to communicate that, and that comes down to believing you can do it first and feeling what the result of that could look like for you. Join me for Self Love Level Up at selfloveleveluppcom before the doors close and the price goes up forever and I look forward to seeing you there. As you head into a new week and you're thinking about how you can speak up a little bit more, I wanna offer you your permission slip and that is that you have permission to speak to just one person. We get so in our heads about the idea of presenting and public speaking, and we think that it is so much bigger than what it actually is. But if you were to have a conversation one-on-one -on -one with someone, you probably do okay, right? We've done that a few times in our lives. We've got that much figured out. Well, it turns out public speaking is really just getting very, very good 
at speaking to one person. I sit down, I make these videos for you every week. And although it may seem like I'm speaking to more than a few people, I don't think of it that way. I look at the lens of the camera like I'm speaking just to you. And I know who you are up here. That's all that matters. And it takes all of the anxiety and issues and yuckiness out of my head about, oh my gosh, who's going to see this? Because I already know. I know who I'm talking to. I know it's you. Hey, you, what's up? We're hanging out again. It makes it so much easier for me to present my ideas when I'm just talking to one person because there's not a whole lot of heaviness that comes with that, at least for most of us. I'm not talking to zero people. I'm not talking to millions of people. I'm not talking to myself, but I'm talking to you. And because I focus on you, I do a much better job of getting my point across. So whether you're getting on a Zoom call where there is more than one person in attendance, or you are going to stand on stage and there's more than a few people in the audience, I want you to practice and have permission to be really good at focusing on the perfect person who will hear your message, the perfect person who will understand your idea so that you can present the best version of yourself when you're sharing that. That's all for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it. As always, remember, subscribe for good vibes, kiss the ones you love, and go after the life you want. I'll see you back here next Sunday. Cheers.